So I'm going to ask this question, and I'm really going to allow whoever is the best person to respond uh, to respond. So just giving you a heads up before I start. So there was a submission uh, to the House of Commons Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights in 2018. The Native Women's Association of Canada stated that some of the recurring themes that contribute to the recruitment of Indigenous women into human trafficking include precarious housing and poor living conditions, high rates of unemployment and unstable employment and low working rate wages, lack of access to social and economic resources and programs, prior exposure to human trafficking and the sex trade from a young age through family or friends, family violence and the impacts of colonialism, such as residential school experience and intergenerational trauma. I'm just wondering if I could get a little bit of specific examples of how this is being addressed uh, by the federal government, if it is at all. Like that. Uh, so it's Michelle from Public Safety. I apologize, I can't see other people. I'm not sure if it's appropriate for me to uh, to speak at this point. Please. Please, Please okay, do. sorry. <laughs> um, um, okay, so what I would say is, um, uh, and, and um, I mentioned it in my opening statements, all of which, you know, basically mirrored all of which you just highlighted. And, and we know that um, the complexity of human trafficking. And so, I would say that the, the government of Canada, um, first starting with the introduction of the funding for the hotline, which was launched in May of 2019, um, followed by the National Strategy to Combat Human Trafficking, which is a five-year project. There are some concrete examples that I can share with you. So first and foremost, when we were developing this, this strategy, we uh, ensured that we did um, regional and national consultations, and those involved conversations with elders, um, with Indigenous leaders, with Indigenous I'm really looking for concrete. Sorry? Like, I'm not trying to be okay. rude, but I am no, looking no, for fine. concrete. I understand the process, but the point okay. is there was some very clear things that are contributing to women to continue to go in this direction and right. be forced into this direction. So I just want to know, you know, housing, employment, those are key things. So okay. what about those? A hotline isn't that. Sure, certainly. Um, so I wonder if my partners that that manage specific programs may be able to give you your answer. Um, we do provide money and we support uh, grassroots organizations, but from a public safety perspective, it's about uh, allowing those organizations to be able to um, to manage their programs. So I wonder if perhaps my colleagues would be best to, to answer okay, that. If that's fair. That would be great. Thank you so much. Ms. Nepeton. Uh, thank you for the question, and I'm hoping um, from a program perspective it will help. Um, as I indicated earlier, I work in the area of First Nation Child and Family Services Program. Um, over the past years, and even most recently, as I've indicated, we've provided, uh, or there have been significant investments made into our programs to allow for the extension of support, as I stated earlier, of children. Uh, aging out of care and maintaining those supports for an additional two years to help them, you know, find their way or get on the right path to avoid falling into those uh, pitfalls that you've mentioned. As well, um, we've also uh, looked at our program and we have, uh, you know, acknowledged, as you've indicated, the effects of colonization historical trauma uh, and cultural dislocation. Um, okay, fair I'll enough. I think I think that's good. It's oh, not really okay. answering the question, so I'm just oh. going to move on. All so right, the okay. Native Women's Association also in the same report talked about uh, identifying and assisting Indigenous victims and survivors of human trafficking and exploitation and how it's been greatly hindered by a lack of disaggregated and cross-jurisdictional data. And we hear this again and again in every re report that we do, that data continues to be this big challenge. I'm just wondering if there's been any work done on that and if there's a, been a recognition of the importance of Indigenous ownership of the data that is collected in relation to the Indigenous experience and how um, that fact of cross-jurisdictional data can be addressed because this continues to be an issue. And I only have one minute left, so 
whoever can answer that best, I would really appreciate it. Please step up. We don't have a lot of time. I'm, I'm wondering if you would like to hear from Statistics Canada on these issues. Um, there, there is data out there, uh, and, and a lot of it has been um, spearheaded by Indigenous groups, um, but uh, this is really a, a question, I think, for Statistics Canada, uh, and, I, and I note that they're not here. Okay, I'm done with my questions. Thank you.